What's up, I'm Ejemma and welcome back to my channel. So about a week ago, I covered JavaScript promises. I talked about what they are, why we use them, how to use them, and also I walked through a real world example. I wanted that video to serve as an introduction to both promises and the idea of asynchronous code. In this video, I wanna cover the topic of async and await, which is my preferred way of writing asynchronous code. If you're not too familiar with what JavaScript promises are, you can go watch my promise video so you can be caught up for this video. But if you're already caught up and comfortable with promises, then let's get started with async and await. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that async and await is just a better, cleaner, more simplified way of writing asynchronous code in JavaScript. So if you're familiar with promises, then the following code block isn't anything new. Here I create my promise using new promise, and then in my callback, I resolve the string Chloe and Hallie. This piece of code is completely fine to use in your project. It's expressive and your code actually self-documents itself by using declarative keywords like promise and resolve. But some could argue, including myself, that this code is a little too much on the eyes to have to read. It just introduces a lot of extra fluff. So an alternative that the JavaScript language introduces is the async keyword, which you just append to any function so you can create async functions. So in this code block, instead of using the promises constructor syntax, I just create an async function. Notice how I insert the async keyword right before the parameters, so I can tell JavaScript that this is gonna be an async function. So whatever you return from an async function gets wrapped inside of a promise object if it's already not a promise object. So that return value can then use any of the built-in promise objects like then and catch. And it's important to note that the async keyword works with any type of function that you create inside JavaScript. Like in this code block, I'm using function declarations where you see async function and then the name of the function, or it can even work with function expressions or anonymous functions. So here you see async function. So going back to the note that async functions return promise objects, this is really helpful for chaining and putting then and catch or any other built-in promise method on it. So in this code block, you can see my promise function being called, and then I use the then method, which I can use to get the internal data that was resolved inside of our promise. This is exactly what I love so much about async functions is that they allow you to write asynchronous code like promises, but they don't steer or veer far away from how you would typically write synchronous functions. But my love for async doesn't stop here because there's a companion keyword called await that allows you to handle resolved data in such a satisfying way. The keyword await quite literally forces JavaScript to wait at the line where await was called. So that means that your code is going to pause and wait for that resolved data to come from that promise. And then when the data resolves, your code will resume like nothing happened. So in this quick line, we see here result is equal to await promise. So you just have to append the await keyword right before promise and your code just gonna wait for that promise to resolve the data. So let's put this line into a little bit more context by placing it inside of an async function. So here I have my function and it's an async function because you can see with the async keyword, and then inside here, I create a promise using the typical promise syntax structure. So my promise equals new promise. And then I just resolve the keyword hello inside of it. And then the next line, I create a new constant variable called greeting. And I use the keyword await on my promise. So right here, my code's going to pause and wait for my promise to resolve hello. Once greeting does get hello, the code will resume. And then I can console log out my greeting in this message string. So it's important to note that none of this is going to run because it exists inside of a function that needs to get called. So it might sound super simple, but remember to call your async functions. So this might feel pretty magical. You can tell your JavaScript code to pause at any moment in time and wait for data, but there is a catch. The keyword await can only be used inside async functions. So in our last code block, everything worked perfectly fine because we used the await keyword inside of an async function. But if I remove the async keyword from my function, I'm gonna have an error thrown saying that I can't use the keyword await outside of an async scope or a function. That's the only real drawback from async await, but I don't find that to be so much of a problem, especially since you have a lot of flexibility of where you can use or create async functions. So await is kind of like the promise objects then method where it handles resolved data. But instead of having to define a multi-line callback function, you can just get the resolved data all in one line, which is so nice. I love it to death. This is all pretty nice, but we can't forget about error handling since it happens a lot when we're dealing with async code. Error handling with async and await might not be as clear as like promises error handling since you can just use the catch method, but there is a way to handle errors. Any error that's thrown during the process of handling this async code will be treated like any other thrown error. So here with my async function, I'm awaiting a rejected promise. 
This actually is equivalent to me just throwing a completely new error inside of my function. So whenever we're dealing with the await keyword, it's always best practice to wrap them inside try catch blocks. So inside my function, I have a try block where I try to await for my rejected promise, but since an error is gonna get thrown, I am plopped into the catch block where I can print out my console warning. So again, similar to my promise video, I wanna show you the real world example, but instead of using promises, I wanna use async and await. So again, I'm just gonna to try to pull all my tweets from Twitter API. So the example that I gave for my promise video looks something like this. I'm requesting my tweets using the fetch method, and then I get the resolved data using then with the callback function with my response. And if everything went right, I can get a hold of my tweets with response.data. But let's see how we can use async and await. Here I have my async function called fetch tweets, so inside, I'm creating a new constant variable called response, which is using the await keyword to wait for the response from my fetch method. My code will wait for the resolve data to come back. And once the resolve data comes back, I can assign response.data to my tweets. This to me feels a lot more natural since we didn't have to create any callbacks that were multiple lines. Everything just happened on the same level, line by line. One thing that I see a lot happening when people start using async and await is that they assume that the top level of their code can handle the await keyword. I was one of those people, I thought that if I just used await on the very outside or global scope of my code, it should be fine, right? Unfortunately, it's a little bit more confusing than you would think because certain environments actually do allow the await keyword to work on the global level, whereas other environments aren't so kind. So if you try to use the await keyword inside of the Google Chrome console, it will work perfectly fine. But if you try to do the same thing inside of a node environment, inside of your terminal, you're gonna throw an error. So a good rule of thumb is to never try to use away at the top level since not every single environment can handle that case. Unless you want to keep track of where your code's going to get ran, if it's only going to be ran inside the browser and no other environment, then go ahead, use away at the top level. But I always think it's good practice to try to make your code more reliable in different environments by catering to all these environments. I personally love using async and away over the promise objects than in catch methods just because it's so much cleaner and easier to read. It does take some time to understand async scopes, but once you get a hang of it, it just makes writing asynchronous code that much nicer. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. You can find me on Twitter where I talk about various topics. You can send me a DM so we can have a chat. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.